What is the schedule for the team on the bye week? Oh, uh, we, we did our normal Monday. We replaced the afternoon meetings with study hall. So guys can get caught up, not caught up, but get a you know, good jump. Academic. Son's phone. Still recording. We'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and then we'll give everybody off, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and come back to work Monday. So far this season, um, in the turnover department, I mean, only one fumble loss. Just what have you thought of the ball security, the intentionality of guys on offense? Yeah, I think we're, oh, geez, we're, I think we're second in the Big Ten right now in turnover margin. Right? Uh, I think we're, I forget what the number, the number is nationally. I just went through it with the team. So it's a good example of, you know, putting your mind to something and, and getting it done. And uh, we, won, we, won, we won the turnover battle again this past game. So it's every game but one. You know, one game we tied, all the rest of them we've won. So, uh, I got it, I got it, I got it. So whoever, so whoever doesn't have a case, someone doesn't have a case. That's a maybe. Um, yeah, but I think it's, you know, I think it's just, it's been months and months of work. And it's also just, you know, I think sometimes we think it's, we were working on it last year. And while it wasn't, it wasn't coming to fruition, I still think the work we did last year, the work we did this off season, the work we did, and training camp has has helped, and it's just the guys. The guys are you know protecting the football. They're you know they're running they're running violently, but still have, have great ball security. So it's it's been a good thing. That was one of the three areas I think of emphasis that we've seen in that chasing through job, that turnover margin, and then being the most physical team and the culture of execution. As you think over the first half of the season, it's a good sort of dividing point of six games. How do you feel like you you've scored in those other two areas? Yeah, I think um, I think it's it's a uh, it's a work in progress. I think I think we've been a very physical team. I you know I think Illinois I didn't feel like we were the more physical team. I felt like we were looking at the scoreboard instead of just you know playing the next play. I'm just worried about winning, which ultimately comes from me. So I thought I thought you know I, I think we've been a very physical team. Um, we have a long way to go, you know, to to be the team that we want to be. Um, and then culture of execution, you know. The penalties, I think, like going into last game, we were 124 out of 134 in terms of most penalized teams. On the flip side, though, if you look at our games, we've had 47 penalties thrown against us. We've had 47 penalties thrown against our opponent. So they've been highly, highly penalty-filled games, if that makes sense. Um, so it's not like, you know, we're just getting destroyed by, you know, we have 11 and they have three, right? Um, but that's something I'd like to see us improve. I mean, I've talked a lot to the guys about improving. And really, when I talk about penalties, I'm talking about pre-snap penalties and I'm talking about you know, which we eliminated last game and I'm talking about uh, for the most part <laughs> and then um, 15 yard personal fouls and the things that happened at Illinois right that aided all the scores so I think we've improved in that area but there's certainly things we have to work on things we have to get better at um, we, we know that you know so um, special teams you know special teams is kind of a tale of two really two things right you have you have in the last two games, you know, five or six balls put down inside the 10, you know, punts down, you know, that land inside the 10. I mean, um, you fake a field goal, you tackle them on a fake punt. You know, so we fake a punt, they fake a field goal, we stop them. But then you have, you know, two block field goals the week before, obviously, you have two block punts. You know, to, to ever have two block punts and not lose the game is almost impossible. And uh, credit to Nate Borkacher, the play he made on that, that blocked, that blocked um, punt he runs the guy down, tackles him at the two, and then we're able to have this epic goal line stand. So, um, so I think that's one area. I think our run game offensively is not where it needs to be. You know, we're not hitting the home run plays. You know, we're getting out and getting 12 yards, and and then um, you know, so I, I think there's just a lot of things. That's a long answer. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of very specific things that I think we have to work on, and we're doing a good job of self scouting ourselves right now just to see, hey, what what are the best things that we do. Some good snaps Saturday uh, as you hit the second half of the season. Is there uh, some strategy that goes into where certain guys might fit where they could play one of their four games? That yeah, yeah, deal? yeah. This was this was a targeted decision. You know, hey, he's going to play in this game. You know, he's physical run stopper. That was excellent on the goal line, so he he fit into this game. Um, I think with all the guys we look at him, some have one game left, some have two games left, some ga some guys haven't played yet they have four and so you know we're utilizing it so I think every guy's a little different but yeah I think you know the way we build the team is to redshirt the guys who can redshirt and let them develop and play them the right amount you know James Williams is out there 
has a big game statistically, right? And it's like, well, you know, we made the decision, a hard decision, but the right decision last year to redshirt him down the stretch. And uh, now you see a much, much, much more developed player in my mind. Yeah, how, about, how would you assess your quarterback play so far? And how pleased are you with that position? I think he's been great. Yeah, I mean, I think um, he's had some wow moments. Um, I think he gets us in the right checks. I think uh, he protects the football. You know, we had the one interception on the RPO this week. Um, you know, that was that's as well coached a defense as you, you know you can see. They're physical, and the wind. You know, uh, the wind was the wind was hard <laughs> early in the game, and um, so I think there was some really good lessons. You know, but we, we knew in that game we needed we the best way to win that game was for us to get up and make them play differently, make them play a way they didn't want to play, and so you know. That you know, Dylan and the guys led us to two two touchdown drives, and you know it's hard. It was really hard. With three of the five drives in the second half started inside the started inside the five. It was hard to get into a rhythm. Now, that's not an excuse. We have to get into a rhythm that way. Don't make no mistake. But like, I thought that was part of it. But uh, I think Dylan's the guy that the guys on offense look to. Um, we can continue to help him with improved run game. Uh, guys getting open, and I think he'll get better and better and better every week. Back to the, the, the run game for a second. Um, you mentioned there was that play that came out, I think, where you guys kind of went with a power play, and it looked like it could go for 95 yards, and it was it was just 12. Is, is there is there a teaching moment there for for, for Dowdell and for your other your other backs on on how to make that one last guy miss? Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you if you go back through that game, whether it's you know we throw, we throw a screen to Thomas early and um, they tackle him low. We throw the ball to Jalen like we didn't just call that thing we we're going to get a first down. We're thinking that's a touchdown, okay? And, and he gets tackled low with one hand, uh, Dante. Um, and yet you go back to the Illinois game. You know our defense was struggling. Our offense just up and every time they scored, we answered. Guys made plays, right? So, you know, I'm not a hey just do your job guy. I'm a I'm a hey do, do your job and then go make a play. And so part of that is, you know, not getting tackled. And we've gotten tackled low a lot through the first six games. And so it's it's a unique balance in that we didn't tackle great the last last two weeks at the level I wanted us to. So we went live versus scout team on defense on Tuesday and Wednesday. And we tackled to the ground, and you know it's easier to do because you know you're doing the tackling. You're probably not going to get hurt. Um, and we tackled much better after the first two drives. We tackled much better in the game than we ever have this year. On offense, it's hard to say, hey, go tackle these guys, right? Go in there and hit Fedoni at the ankles. You know, go in there and hit you know. Uh, Emmett at the ankle. So you're trying to always do it in drills, and it's just not manifesting itself at the level I want it to. So part of that's, part of that's me, right? Part of that's us coming up with a strategy and practice. You know, in that play, Dante stiff arms him, and he kind of stiff arms him, and, and we, need, we, need to, we need to stiff arm him, stiff arm him. So the week before Washington made all those safeties miss and had 207 yards rushing. I also know, though, when you face a team led by, led by a good head coach, if they give up a ton of yards rushing, they're not giving up a ton of yards next week. You better be ready. And so, you know, they played really well on defense. Um, but that's a major area for us is those 12-yard runs have to start being 50-yard runs. What do you uh, see or right, just his continued in play? I mean, what has he given you, and, and how do you manage that maybe if Tommy Hill is, is back in the lineup in Indiana? Yeah, well um, – uh, Sierra's done an excellent job, and he's uh, competitive. He's tough. He's smart. He's helped us on special teams. You know, he, he made that play on the back fade of the goal line. You know, where he reached back and went and made a play. You know, kind of going back to what we were just talking about. You know, you don't you don't the, the goal line stands weren't great calls by Tony. They were good calls by Tony with guys making great plays. Right? You know, Giff has the tight end man to man. He's ineligible, so he just runs right through and hits him. Right? Just Sierra. Picking a ball off, knocking a ball down, just elite, elite focus. So Sierra's really helped us, you know, during this time with Tommy. Um, as they come back, you know, I think it's it's probably too early. You know, we, we obviously are always talking about, hey, what can we do? How can we help ourselves? But um, you know, I'm not sure that I'm, re I'm ready to know that yet. But but you know, we hope to get Tommy back. And um, uh, you know, we thought he was going to play in that game up until kickoff. You know, as he was running out, like kind of. Um, just couldn't quite go, and but again, we have Sierra, so it's not like we're forcing Tommy to come back too early, right? Like we want him to come back and be healthy. So hopefully, Tommy can have a good week of practice, and then uh, you know between the three of those three guys, we'll we'll rotate him around. What specifically did you see um, on those block punts, and how determined do you see guys within that operation to you know get that fix coming out in the second half of the season? Yeah, you know, um, 
the first one, you know, the first one I'll, I'll say who it, I usually won't say who it was, but I'll say, it, I mean, you know, just Giff just blocked the wrong guy. You know, I mean, I say that because he's a. He, he, there's, I don't think anyone here would question his determination. His, you know, it's not any of those things. It's you know, they brought the gunner in. He just, you know, he just missed it. Right and then, they had a couple of long runs. He came over to me. And he's like, I got it. I messed up. I got it. And the second one, you know, we just the personal protector just didn't make the block. So, um, you know, they challenged you in every regard. And um, again, if I could go back, I wish I'd have faked the punt, the first one, because knowing we knew they were going to do that, and we knew the corners were just going to sit there. We, we knew we knew we were going to be able to throw it. It was a little challenging to say, hey, let's go throw it in that wind with our punter, you know, but I believed in Brian. And, I mean, I wish you guys could have seen. One of the best things I've ever seen is, you know, this kid gets hurt. He can't even move. He's out there on the little practice mini field, that little AstroTurf field out there at halftime, and he's throwing just to see, can I get my back loose enough to go throw because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna throw the throw. And, um, you know, just found a way to get it done. Um, so I think, I think all the guys recognize, they recognize that, hey, this has to improve. And, but it's also my job to show them, like, hey, you, we have to eliminate the catastrophic things, because there are other things that are all like, they're all they're all they're all trending in the right direction, right? Like our kickoff coverage has improved, like that, you know, they just obviously they fair caught them, like, um, you know, our our kickoff return didn't have many opportunities, obviously for that, and um, you know, punt punt rush, we had a chance to go, we had a chance, we got close to blocking one, and um, Bushini again flipping the field, you know, that that last punt was a, as big a play as. I've been a part of, and again, him faking that punt, they then didn't come after us again after that, right? So that was as big a play as that was. It flipped the field. Then the next punt, he puts the ball down at the five, and then they never really rushed us again because that last punt, I was scared to death that they were going to come through. I mean, they're sending one more guy than you have a blocker for. At the end of the day, like, your punter's got to get it off, and, um, um, you know, the, 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 the fake punt slowed them down maybe a little bit. Did he have a hot call there where when he saw it, he could throw it again? Uh, no, we weren't doing that. We were just calling it. Yeah, we were because it was we had to adjust the protection to make sure no one goes down the field, right? You know, so um, in the NFL, it's a little easier to do that because they have to go. They can't go until the ball's kicked. But in college, you can go right away. So we had a full fake on. So how rare is it for teams not to cover the gutters like that, just to let those guys run free? It's an old, uh, it's an old Frank Beamer, Virginia Tech. You know, they used to, they used to rush the punt and leave the corners off at nine yards. They just stood there and they watched. Um, these guys are doing it at five yards, and they're as well coached a team. I mean, I'm not, I'm in no way saying that. I'm just saying, like, not many people have a punter with an arm like ours does. I mean, he, 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 he can throw, throw, and so, um, you know, a lot of people wouldn't throw a, hey, throw a 22 yard honey hole shot, right? Like, that's hard to do. But let, thankfully, Bruce Sheeney's probably, you know, he's probably, you know, got one of the better arms on the team. To be quite honest, he's really good at this stuff. And, uh, you know, we had Johnny Hecker at Carolina, who's epic for this stuff. So we have a couple of these things. That you know Ed has, and it worked. Could Tristan still be available come, coming out of the second half? And are there any other injury updates? Yeah, I think Tristan's going to begin uh, potentially, potentially begin the process of testing and seeing where he's at, and whatever that whatever that uh, means in terms of when he's comfortable, you know, healthy. So um, there's that. There's Tommy, right? Tommy you know, was trending closer. Like I said, we was up until kickoff. We thought he was going to go. So um, you know, it's just a it's just a just a day by day thing with him. Is Bly Hill up? Yeah, Bly Hill. Bly Hill. You know, we had him up ready to go, but we didn't play him, right? Because Sierra played so well. So, to me, you're looking at a guy who's got four open games in the next six games. So, pending something, a bomb going off, you know, you could probably play him in four games. And you've got like Amari Sanders has a game left. You've got Larry Tarver has two games left. So, a bunch of these young players who are developing and getting better and better and better, they have some opportunities here. So, um, you know, if Bly wants to play, so if, if Tommy can't go or if Sierra were to get hurt, you know, Bly would be right there. But uh, Jeremiah Charles has done a good job stepping in as needed. You know, you think about it, you're out there, and, you know, he's the, he's really the fifth corner two weeks ago, and now he's the third corner and so you know, with Tommy out. So it's with Tommy and Bly out, so it's a credit to him. I know that Heinrich Harbert gets onto the field about five or six times a game. This is a question I get a lot of why he's not used more. Like, can you speak to that just as a – I think fans really enjoy watching him play, but he doesn't – he doesn't get a ton of carries or yeah. things like that. What, why does um, – how? what's the challenge of trying to get him into the game and also get the ball into the game? Yeah, um, I'll say this. I think he needs to play more. So let me start there, right? Like, So I don't disagree when a fan says that. Um, the challenge is, is like, you know, having always – you have a lot of good players on offense. Like, it's also like they also, the offense also has me saying, like, hey, get Ja'Cory the ball nine times. Hey, you know, throw the fade to Nayor. 
hey, why isn't, why isn't Fanoni catching it five times? Hey, you know, I mean, they have all those things. Right? I'm like, hey, Banks, like, get him eight catches. Hey, you know, so they have that for me. Hey, why hasn't Carter Nelson touched the ball yet to this today, guys? Hey, hand the ball to Janeerin on the reverse. Um, so we, we have a lot of players like that that I want to see touch the football. If you think about what's happening on the perimeter, if we can just get our run game up to about 180 yards a game, you know, between the tackles, and I'm not this, this is not a shot. To, this is nothing. This is just all of us, right? The O line, the hey, throw the throw the RPO when it's there when they blitz. Guy making somebody miss. If we can just improve that number, I think the overall thing will, ha- will happen. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think in part I think part of it is we spend so much time with so much time with Heinrich getting him ready to be the second quarterback. That you know, because I mean, he's a play away, right? <laughs> so I think that's maybe delayed it a little bit. Um, but uh, no, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But I also will say that you know, the offensive staff hears me say that about Fedoni every day. They hear me say that about all these guys every day. I know we'll get into Indiana next week, but what do you make of, of their start? And that's a, a big noon kickoff. Well, I mean, uh, you know, um, um, I'm not surprised by it. Let me say that. I mean, the, the team they had at James Madison, I mean, was was an excellent team. And the world's changed. You know, you you, you come somewhere now, and a lot, a lot of your good players come with you, right? So uh, they brought over a lot of guys who know how to win. They have a great coaching staff. And, they, and you know, uh, the Signetti family, if you're from where I'm from, that's a legendary coaching family. They, you know, um, Coach Signetti Sr. was as good as there was. And, um, you know, both brothers are – Excellent, you know, Kurt's a great coach. He's, he's turned every place around that he's been, and um, you know, they, like two years ago they had a pretty good team, or three years. You know, it's not like Indiana's been in the gutter for them. I mean, they have, they've had good seasons, and he comes in with swagger. He's got a really good quarterback transferred in. They brought some good players. They had some good players that were already there. They've got great wideouts, and they're rolling, right? They're 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 following his demeanor, and and they play with a lot of confidence and swagger, and so it's great. Again, it goes back to what I said all training camp of. Looking at the schedule before the season and saying what games are easy and what games are hard is not true, and it's not the way of college football anymore. Everyone's got to get that in. Like, like how many un, how many teams lost to teams that you never thought – you would have never thought Alabama would ever lose to Vandy. You never would have thought maybe USC would lose to Minnesota. The portal transfers, and I, it's changed all of it. That's why there's no NFL undefeated NFL teams, right? So, you know, it used to be that a player would say, man, I got offered from, you know – whomever, Ohio State, I'm going there, you know. But now he might get offered, I don't talk about it, I might get offered from Blue Mountain State, let's just say, and that's the top school in the country, and they're offering, hey, we'll give you, you know, X amount of money. And another school that's two pegs lower on the pecking order of recruiting will say, hey, we'll give you three times that. Because for this guy, he's their 15th best recruit, but for them, they're like, well, we can't get those guys. We'll let's get him. So now that kid's like, do I go there for 50 grand or do I go there for 250? So all of a sudden that second – so why were the great teams of the 90s and 2000s, 2010s, why were they so dominant? They stacked up all the talent. And when guys got hurt, the next guy came in was also a Parade All-American. Now the Parade All-Americans are all spreading out a little bit more. <laughs> so it's just different. So the days of, the days of you know, they're just different now. So I think it just Indiana is a tremendous example of that. It's a completely different roster this year than it was next year. You know, you guys got stuck with me. You know, like I said, I didn't get to bring anybody with me. You know, I, I love Bryant, but he can't play. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they didn't let me bring McCaffrey. They didn't let me bring Brian Burns. So you know, just we came in here and we just we we just been building with the guys that were here and trying to recruit. Just kind of this more a little more the old school way. But you know what? Like people that are moving now, they're, 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 it's just a different world. So. Um, like we all have to just adjust to it. Not part of that different world. Have you, with the four-game redshirt and transfer trend that's kind of going on, have you had to have some conversations the last few weeks with guys who are thinking about leaving, or has it been pretty? Yeah, easy? I've had no one. I've had no one say, "Hey, I'm thinking about leaving. Can I redshirt?" My, my main conversations with most guys are like, I'm, 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 I'm normally the one saying, "Hey, you should redshirt." <laughs> like, I just don't, I just don't believe. That playing for guys, if they're not playing, like Jacory should redshirt. He's playing, but if you're playing eight plays a game as a freshman, or playing fifty plays a game as a senior, like look at Ty Robinson. Like look at how dominant Ty is right now. And was he that way last year? Was he that way the year before? They were. He was good. He's gotten better every year. And that extra year for Ty now, he's doing things. So I just I believe in redshirting. I believe in the old school process. So. But, um, you know, it takes, it takes parents who trust you, it takes players who trust you. Um, 
and, I'll, and at the same time, if a player says to me, Coach, I want uh, – it just isn't right for me. I want to transfer. Can I – Can I? Uh, I'm not going to throw him off the team. You know what I mean? Like, uh, 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 it's just not my way, right? So, anyway, I, I haven't ha- but I haven't had anybody come to me and say, hey, I want to do this or anything like that. Like, I haven't had that. Just tie. Just tie. Playing 61 snaps on a day like that, is that worth praise, worthy of praise, or is it something you just expect from yeah, I think uh, I think it's worthy of praise. Yeah, I, I try to keep. I'd like that number to be like in the forties and forty five. But like, again, it was a little different because because you know there are some subtle things in that game. Like you know, uh, like Tony Tony got out of his comfort zone and he played three different personnel packages. Right, like he took the jack off the field and played with three true linebackers to play the three down stuff. Then he played with two jack with a big package, right, and just said, "Hey, we're not going to let you run the ball." Then he played with the base package, and what what it allowed us to do was get us to where we had a lead, and now, to me, playing 60 plays when you're pass rushing at the end of the game is a lot different than 60 plays of, you know, here comes power, ISO. So getting the lead and then letting Ty pass rush, but Ty's in great shape and he practices hard. And uh, that was the number one thing last year with Ty I'd always talk about, like, because we didn't have him in the offseason. He had that shoulder surgery. I was always like, if you got to get into great shape and play hard. You know, like, you can't play hard 15 snaps a game, and Ty's running all over creation out there. So, yeah, I think, I think playing 61 plays is – a credit to him. One record. How do you feel about the second half of the season and achieving the goals that you guys set out at the beginning? Yeah, well, I didn't set any goals out. I just, I, I mean, I literally mean that. Like, I just want to be relevant. And, and so I think we're, at least we're relevant. I still wake up at night upset we lost to Illinois. That's the God's, God's the truth. I, after we win, I'm happy for 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay, let's get ready for what's next. Um, I'm proud of our players, though. That That's the important message. I'm proud of the work. I'm proud of the lack of distractions. I'm proud of the selflessness. I'm proud of the growth. I'm proud of, you know, not I'm not sad about it, but we lose Teddy, then we lose Turner, and now Gunner's out there and he's battling, right? We lose Tommy, who's, you know, one of the top players in the country, and all of a sudden Sierra's battling. I'm proud of Marquise Buford, like just every week. just come. So I'm proud of a lot of those things. Um, as it relates to the second half of the season, it's the same to me as the first. Like after Illinois, I could just feel our team – I could feel our coaching staff. We have to win this game. We have to win this game. And I just I just enjoyed this game better where the guys just wanted to play. And so I'm going to do my best to go 1-0 and every week. Even the bye week, I'm going to try to be great this week on the bye week. And some of that's rest. Some of that's getting away. Some of that's practicing the heck out of the young guys. Um, but uh, that, that's, that's really all I look at. You say two days of tackling last week. How rare is that for you? Yeah, I, I, I've, I've, so I haven't ever really done that. You know, now – my teams at Temple and my teams at Baylor, I hate to talk about the past, like they would have come out on Tuesday and maybe tackled okay, thudded okay, and then on Wednesday they'd have, like, I'd have shown them the bad plays and they'd have gone out there and they'd have tackled. <laughs> With, you know, they'd have been like they had an edge to them. And um, we really hadn't gotten that back yet the uh, last two weeks. Like we were better, I thought, against Purdue. Um, but, you know, Menungai's a really good back. That's a really good back now. And so – to me, the game's easy when it comes down to tackling. Like, I, I give them all like one. I mean, hey, we're going to have to tackle. I told the defense you're going to have to win third. You know, win third down. Rutgers gets in a lot of third downs. I think it was between third and fourth down. It was just epic how well they did. The offense. I said, hey, the key for you guys is just score touchdowns in the red zone. This is top ten red zone defense. We were there twice. We scored touchdowns twice. Right? It might be a reverse sweep to Janier. It might be a power, old school power play. But we got in the end. Excuse me. We got in the end zone. Special teams. I just told them steal a possession. Now we stole a possession with the fake. No, I didn't think we we're going to get two punts blocked, but we stole a possession. So, um, so it was all those things. But part of that was tackling. But when I was at Penn State, uh, every Tuesday our defense tackled the scout team, and so I just said, you know, what? we might have to tackle. <laughs> we might have to get ourselves. We had, and then they played as well. And the great message to our guys is they put a little bit more in, and they got a lot more out. Okay, so I don't know if you're going to do that every week, but if you're struggling tackling, we need to tackle more. And we obviously need to do more punt. Protection. We obviously need, so it's just kind of that thought process. Coach, after the game, James Williams was very emotional about how far he's come athletically and personally. How much have you noticed that, and how much of a ceiling does he have here? I think he, well, in terms of he, he can be whatever he wants to be. And I, I made the point in there, like I, I said it here, he, he was on the scout team last week. Like this wasn't like this was like a hey, this is going to be a big James Williams week. This was like <laughs> get Riley Van Poppel and Sue and get the big guys in there. Let's get ready to go. And so he he wants to. He wants to play, so he goes over to the scout team when Terrence sends him over, and he gets good reps. You know, gets the good, you know, good tackles and works, and all of a sudden it shows up in the game. Um, you know, I, I 
I just know James. I know his heart. I know who he is as a person. Uh, he's he's a really, 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 really wonderful young man. You know, we had the D-line at our house two weeks ago, and, and like, just, you know, my kid, my kids love him. My dogs love him. Like, he's just got that kind of a heart, you know, and I think everyone rallies around him. So he made some plays. But what I liked was, you know, I'm not big on all the, like, hey, look at me stuff, right? Like, I'm kind of old school that way. I loved after his one sack. You know, I always like to watch a TV copy. He's, po- he's pointing at Jamari, thanking him. Because, like, Jamari did an excellent job on, you know, getting up the field so he could come up and under. And so, to me, it's it's not, you know, it's it's selfless. And I think Terrence has done an amazing job in that room of building a brotherhood, a camaraderie where they all root for each other. So, I'm proud of James a lot. He's doing he's doing well in school. He's doing well socially. He's, he's a really good dude. Will you be able to recruit on the bye week or how will you manage? I know you only get the 33 days, I know. Will you be able to use much this week? Yeah, we won't do much this week. Um, I might go, we might go see one guy here, one guy there. Um you know, we've been sending some guys out along the way. We're, we're going to use the second bye week as the big recruiting week. Um, I think this week to me, you know, this this started in July. You know, we started training camp in July. So it's July into August. You look at most Big Ten teams, they didn't go six in a row like we did. Some did, but not many. So I, I, I really want the coaches and staff, players to work and then just take a little time to refresh, come back, Take them one, and then we'll play three games, and then we'll have a bye week, and then that bye week, you know, we'll go recruit and we'll um, use up the rest of our days. But yet, yeah, to your point, the change in the schedules made it made it a little bit harder. And then you know, there's no December recruiting now, so really, uh, most of the days I'm going to try to use them for my days, you know. So um, we'll, we'll try to get out next week. Yeah, next. Just for a second. So, you know, it was before the Purdue game. You did sort of the the one on one drill before the game, then you did it again against Rutgers, and it, it strikes me that you know last year after the Michigan game is when you guys had sort of a, a change moment. It felt like the Illinois game, was that similar? <coughs> Even though, I mean, it wasn't 45-7, but was, are there similarities to that Michigan moment, to this Illinois moment, and how it how you changed as a coach? And maybe button pushing is the wrong word, but like change maybe of an approach or oh, something? Oh, no, no, I'm a button pusher. There's no doubt. That's my job. There's no doubt. Like, I described it, I described it to the players today as like, it's like, like you know, the whack-a-mole game, right? Like, like, oh, last year it was turnovers, and then you fix turnovers, boom, and all of a sudden penalties show up, and now you're like, penalties, and now it's like, oh, field goal block, boom, and then the punt block. Like, and it's like at some point, you, you know, you're trying to – but, again, as the years go on, those things get less – the lessons are learned. The lessons I'm talking about or Tony's talking about start happy, being happening amongst the guys, and when people refer to culture, that's really what it is. Um, I mean, I think we're unbelievably physical in spring and in training camp. It's just there's a natural inclination for people as the season goes on like, you literally have full-time people. You know, Mitch comes up to me, hey, we should be careful player load. And you na- you naturally want to cut back. And um, to play great defense, you have to practice great defense. Like, to play great defense, you have to practice great defense. And so, um, you know, we practiced hard the Illinois week. Don't get me wrong. I just think, you know, again, we're learning how to do things. You know, like I mean, Notre Dame lost to Northern Illinois, and they came out the next week against Purdue, and they looked like they were on a mission, you know. So, I remember watching that, and then that's kind of what happens to teams, you know. We we still have a we still have a lot of things to figure out about ourselves. Um, last week, last year after Michigan, it was like I will not tolerate quitting. That's all that message was. It was you you, you can lose. We don't want to lose, but people are not spending their money to come to a game and watch us lay down. That is just not happening. And uh, we didn't, certainly didn't quit against Illinois. I just think against Illinois it was again kind of that hey get to th- get to the moment. It's a little tight. We've had two seven-point games in the in, in the fourth quarter the last two weeks, right? And now I know Purdue, whatever, but you know it's two seven-point games. I didn't think in either game our guys panicked. I thought they played, you know, they played to the end of the game. So hopefully we're making some progress in that area. I know we kind of make a big deal about pregame, but what what is the thinking with that? There is no thinking. It's just, um, it's you know, so much of this is just uh, passion and energy and like you know excitement and so it's like hey. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come together and we're gonna just celebrate each other. Like, and the guys, our team, our team really, really, really revolves around certain guys, right? So, like, when Roman Mangini goes out there and he went against Hartzog, right? He was a starter. That wasn't like you know, and those two guys battle at the guard. It just lights your team up a little bit. So, I mean, we might not do it next week. Who knows? Who knows what we'll do? But it's just, it's just. It's just um, Something that just seemed to make sense, right? Like, you know, I think so much of this thing is like getting out of your head and coming from, going from your heart. And it just felt like at Purdue, maybe we needed that, you know, just not needed it, but did it. But, you know, the whole, I, I, I don't know if I told you the whole onus of it, you know, the whole, not onus, the whole, the whole origination of it came from when I used to work for my mentor, one of my mentors, George DeLeon, he would talk about 
over the years playing Nebraska. And when you played Nebraska, he said, and I don't know if this is true. People say I'm a lot full of it, but this is what he told me. He said, like, the O-line would line up and they'd put, like, the D-line or the linebackers and they would, like, run into them and then the O-line would hit them. And, like, as the other team was running out, he said half the time you lost the game. Maybe Phil Snow's like, you lost the game before you even played them. You know, you just, you just came out and you saw the physicality of Nebraska and the pipeline and you were like, it's going to be a long day. So we were at Bay, uh, Temple at the time. We said, all right, well, we're going to do – we're going to do Oklahoma drill at the 45-yard line. And I still have coaches who will say it to me like, then we got to Baylor and the kids were like, we're not doing that, coach. We don't want to do that. Let's do pat and go and we'll get open. And so we stopped doing it and just, I don't know, I was fired up for the Purdue game. I was like, hey, give me two guys. And and then it was cool this week. You know, three guys came running out. You know, I said, give me an alignment. Three guys came running out. They, so it's just, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's not much to it. Not much to it. Just just a way to celebrate being physical. Michael was that out there did that did that please you and how'd you feel like you played in the limited snaps yet uh oh i was pleased that they all came out right i mean the canock you know the hardest thing is when they when one guy won't leave and then you have to referee and i was like oh just someone please walk away but uh, no i was happy for micah he, he wanted to get in there he wanted to, he, he played he was the jumbo tight end um you know he he caved that edge down um you know micah played the way he's capable of playing right you know and so um, Mike, Micah can be whatever he wants to be. Um, he's he's like everyone else just has to stay focused day by day. And uh, but he really helped us in those crucial. I mean, we went for a fourth and one on our own thirty yard line, right, or thirty five yard line, the first drive. Um, we went for, you know, we were three for three on fourth down. You count the, f the fake punt. So that was not a game we were coming here to play it conservatively. And so I think you know him, him and Linda Meyer, Borkacher, those guys running the power play, leaving Tritt. So happy for Micah. Hopefully we can build on it this week. All good. All right.